Thank you for watching this video. If you are watching this on a Sunday, it is exactly one month until Polarian find out if their unique drug device combination gets approval from the FDA. Now, in this video, I'm going to point out five reasons I think you should research this company further, because in short, it's a very special company. There aren't many companies like this, so opportunities have come like this, especially on AIM. But I believe this company could be a FTSE 100 company. That means a company valued it in excess of four or five billion, okay? Because it is serving a massive medical unmet need, all right? And if they get that approval on the 5th of October, they get com to uh, commercialize that product, and then it's globally significant. Okay, let's get into it. The contents of this video does not constitute investment advice. Do your own research. If you do invest in anything mentioned in this video without doing your own research and the share price goes down, you only have yourself to blame. However, if the share price goes up and you want to give me some credit, I'm happy with that. Palarian, breathtaking images. Okay. One month ago, five reasons to research. I like that breathtaking images because essentially that's what the patients have to do. They have to inhale xenon gas and uh, they go into the MRI scanner. And I'll point out here the five reasons why I think it was a research this company. Um, number one, market opportunity. Okay. The group operates in an area of significant, and it is significant, unmet medical need. That means it's needed and it's in medicine, which is very important. The annual burden of pulmonary disease in the U.S. alone, only the U.S. as annually, is estimated to be over $150 billion annually. Okay? The group's technology, a novel investigational diagnostic approach, offers a non-invasive, radiation-free, functional imaging platform. Okay, that's what they do. And they said, we believe that our unique, now that means there's only one of them, Unique medical drug device combination offers the ideal solution for improving pulmonary disease diagnosis. It's a big area, okay? And the market size here. Like I said, annually, the burden of pulmonary disease in the US alone is estimated to be about 150 billion. That's only in the US, that's every year. Polarian technology enables existing, that's very important, so they're not pushing out anyone. It enables existing magnetic resource or MRI systems to become the optimal tool for lung function imaging, providing a new use, a new use for MRI. So it's going to help MRI manufacturers, you know, and hospitals get more value for money. But it improves the scanners, of which there are 13,000 across the U.S. market, 13,000 in the U.S. alone. OK, there are about 50,000 plus MRI scanners globally. And remember, this technology improves an MRI scanner. So the MRI manufacturers uh, are going to have a reason to want to add this because it's a value add to all hospitals. Okay. Number three, it's unique. Like I said there. Now this is very important. You know, when you're looking for a company with a moat, like Warren Buffett describes, Polarian technology creates an MRI signal which is approximately a hundred thousand times stronger than a conventional MRI signal. Now remember, it's radiation free. It's non-invasive. So you think, oh, hang on, x-rays, is that, it almost kill you. Yeah, it's radiation-free, it's non-invasive, 100,000 times better signal. The technology is non-invasive, radiation-free, and is unique in its ability to visualise three vital aspects of lung function. So we're not talking about, you know, a one-trick pony here. It does three. So it looks at ventilation, okay? That's the airflow in and out of the avula, the lungs. It looks at gas exchange. This is through the barrier tissue in and out of the bloodstream, between the lungs and the bloodstream. And microvascular uh, hemodynamics, or the blood throw, through the capillary bed. So, look at this. No existing lung imaging technology can provide quantitative analysis of all three factors. There's nothing out there. Now, if you want to find what's wrong with the patient's lungs, you need this technology. You can't say, oh, we can't find out what's wrong with it. Our tech's not up to it. It's not going to happen. Tech gets better, uh, and that's taken on board. It's used to improve people's health. As such, the technology can be used in earlier and more efficient diagnosis of a range of lung diseases. A range, so COPD, asthma, IPF, PAH, 
plus a monitoring of response to therapy um, development of companion dental for, 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 so basically optimizing intervention so it, it's easier to diagnose and then you can monitor it afterwards and you can give you know optimize interventional surgical procedures so you can be more, more accurate in diagnosis and treatment of that as well so it's huge this is the areas look across this this is a healthy lung okay this is the, the software there you breathe in that's the xenon gas breathing, then it's uh, created on the, on the software, and it shows you that's a healthy lung, lots of green, look, a bit of red around here, a bit of red around here, that's where uh, low oxygen levels. There's barrier tissue as well, there's blood as well, blood flow, and these are conditions that people have in lungs, okay? There's asthma, for example, look at that, very little oxygen getting in there, big blue, blue ears, and of course this is uh, barrier tissue as well, so a different area, and I don't know if you saw the comparisons to this at the moment, like x-rays, my son's got a lung condition, and it's just a, 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 a grey blob. It doesn't pick out like this. It doesn't have this kind of detail. And like I said, all these different um, you know, uh, you know, conditions can be picked up in ventilation, barrier tissue, and blood. Okay. Now, look at this. This is very special. This is Polarian on Twitter. Congratulations to our collaborator, Professor Ferguson Gleason, on the online publication day of the pioneering research into long COVID. And they say here, and I'll go into this, this is um, Professor Gleason yeah, of Radiology, University of Oxford, one of the best universities in the world, okay, and he was using Polaris Tech. He said, many COVID-19 patients are still experiencing breathlessness seven months after being discharged from hospital, despite their CT scans indicating their lungs are functioning normally. COVID, long COVID is a massive problem. It can't be picked up on CT or MRI scans. Understand that? It can't be picked up. What can pick it up? Polarian's technology. That is huge. That is massive. Don't underestimate how big this problem is. That just shows how much better, or the add-on, the value add-on, you know, Polarian's technology gives to MRI and CT scans, you know? So, he said, our follow-up scans using hyperpolarized xenon MRI have found that abnormalities not normally visible on regular scans are indeed present and these abnormalities are preventing oxygen getting into the bloodstream as it should in all parts of the lungs this is huge so we've all seen the reports of people saying I'm still suffering I find it really hard to walk and to breathe these people have been sent home because they haven't been picked up on MRI scans or CT scans they've got long COVID they've got a real condition that condition here can't be picked up unless you use polarian technology. And it's an add-on to MRI CT scan. So if you want to bring your CT or MRI scan up to date, get polarian technology. Four, growth. This is a broken note, of course. Um, and they're showing there from 2021, when it'll be commercialized this year, they will go from, if you, well, if you look at it, I haven't taken it from 2020. It'll be even bigger from there. But that was 2.5 million in 2020. They reckon it'll go up to 11.2 million this year after commercialization. And then 2029, 167 million. That is 1,400% revenue growth over those years. Or 175% compound annual growth rate. That's nuts. And it, it gets better than this, right? Player and plans to expand the clinical utility to technology into multiple pulmonary indications, indicating pulmonary vascular disease in cardiology as well as geographically into other key markets such as Europe, Japan and China. And Richard Hullohan, the CEO, says, a very conservative guy. I wanted to be more promotional, but he's not. He's always conservative. We would expect to see polarizers in all hospitals over the next 10 years. Of course they would. Then add-on, a value add-on to MRI scanners and CTs. You, you will not have the best performing CT MRI scanner unless you add their tech. So, 2%. Now listen, um, that broken note, by the way, there, okay, that's only on 2% of the US. They're so starting in the US, in the big institutions, academic institutions, then they're moving away globally. But they're going to get FDA approval and start there. That there, that 1,400% growth, and that 175% CAGR, that's only based on 2%, 2% of the US market. And as Richard says, this is significant globally. It's really significant globally. I mean, you know, it, it's appropriate globally as a business. If you've got an MRI scan, a CT scan without the tech, it's not working properly. 
you know, essentially. So just on 2%, that's where you get to, okay? Now, if we look at 2% of 50,000 scanners uh, in, in the world, that's 1,000, okay? So you can times the broken note by five, pretty much, okay? That's that, 10 billion in revenue, 10 billion there, uh, 2% of the world's would be a 60 bagger by 2030. That's 8,800% growth in revenue of 2% of the global market or 1,100% compound annual growth. To me, that's absolutely, it'll, it'll be in a lot more hospitals, not, not 2%, more like 10%. So you can times that again by another five. You know, so you can literally see over 5,000% compound annual growth if they get to sort of, you know, 10% of the global market of MRI scanners. I don't see why they could. And listen, what's very important is they get exclusivity if they get Hatch-Waxman. So number five, the milestone, of course. Let's talk about this. 5th of October, FDA review. We continue to interact with the FDA as they review our NDA with a target date, um, 5th of October. Okay, they continue to interact with them. So it's, it's a collaborative process, okay? Preparation for launch. We continue to prepare for the potential launch of our drug device combination post-FDA approvals. So they're already um, getting ready for that. In particular, we have been building a sales and marketing organization with recent recruitment of several sales positions, okay? Now, what are the risks here on it not getting FDA approval or getting FDA approval? Let's look at this. This is what the broker says. Until formal FDA approval for its drug device technology, Polaria remains a development stage life sciences company, and as such, the key near-term risks lie in development and the regulatory risks, of course. There's a risk of the ongoing COVID-related demands on the FDA's resources and related restrictions on the manufacturing site inspections could delay this decision beyond the 5th of October, the date. So they could be delayed because just slippage. You know, FDA have thousands of applications every day. Of course, nothing runs as smoothly as possible. So it could slip a little bit just because sheer workload. That's not a problem, you know. The more significant risk, this is the biggest risk, right? is the FDA denies approval via the issuance of a complete response letter, which would impact our investment case. Of course, if they don't get FDA approval, that's a big risk. And you can say, where do you go from there? Because you can't commercialize it without FDA approval. Okay, FDA is, 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 is the benchmark pretty much, and they're also launched in America. However, it's worth looking at this. We believe this event has been significantly de-risked by three things, okay? Positive outcomes from two pivotal trials, this is uh, phase one, two and three, the designs of which were pre-agreed with the FDA. So the trials which they've gone through, which they passed, clinical trials, they were designed in collaboration with the FDA. Okay, All the way along, this company has worked with the FDA, and the FDA has worked with this company, Polarium. And those trials formed the basis of the application to the FDA. So this is no surprise application it's been collaborated, it's been built upon between the two organisations, and uh, it's now been submitted. Number two, the FDA's apparent comfort with the inert safety profile of in inhaled xenon gas. That's, there's, there's, they've already passed that previously in other you know, um, you know, sort of, uh, applications, so not a problem. And normally, this is a drug-device combination, okay? The drug in this is xenon gas. Xenon gas is in the air, of course, it, it, you know, if you take lots of it and kill you, but... In, in, a, in measured amounts, and it is very measured, they're happy with it because it's already been part of other applications they've passed. So it's not seen that the drug in this, the drug is always the risky side of any sort of uh, you know, trial and FDA approval process. The drug in this is, is relatively safe and they're happy with that. So if you're looking at the riskiest part of this, it's probably that, you know. And uh, number three, the fact that the technology has been used in the market for some time already and widely adopted by leading academic institutions in the pulmonary field. Over 100 peer-reviewed papers have been published using Polaris technology on patients. So not only have they gone through clinical trials, which have proved safe, uh, and that's done in design with the FDA, but right now, across the world, including you know, Oxford University, these are leading academic institutions using this technology and there's been no problems from the safety profile whatsoever in fact all you've had is very positive news on the analysis of pulmonary problems like long covid so you could say there's a risk 
it seems pretty low, you know, because it's effective and it's seemingly safe. And when you're looking at, you know, passing through things through clinical trials, is it effective? Is it safe? Or is it safe first? Is it effective? Yes, it's safe. Is it effective? Yes, it is. Um, so to me, it doesn't seem like a high risk. And the broker says they assign a 90% probability of success. That's quite high. And if you don't want, you know, other investments in sort of uh, clinical phase trials, uh, you know, clinical trials, uh, studies and all that stuff, you're talking about a sub-15% chance of success. This is 90% chance of success. So if you're investing in a company, you know, in clinical trials, taking drugs through clinical trials, you're looking sub-15% chance of success. This is 90% chance. Huge. Thank you for watching. Like I said, listen, one month if you're watching this on Sunday or less than that if you're watching after that until the big date, the FDA approval date in which if Polarian get past, and there's a high probability of that, this is going to be a cracking business, a superb business, an outperformer of some degree, really is. Uh, and so do some research. I honestly implore you to do some research in this company. Uh, and not many opportunities come around like this. Uh, and I totally believe that I've held this company for two years now and I'm s still in there still exciting more excited now because we're literally you know weeks away from approval there, if it happens which it should do um, listen by all means click around there's some other videos here on the side there up above uh, like share subscribe hit that notification bell if you like what I'm putting out there and uh, if you comment below I'll probably ignore it I'm a bit rubbish like that to be honest but uh, by all means if it's nice if it's nasty don't bother so, you know, I'll ignore it anyway